What is poppin' guys? Sean Don is back with a technical analysis. Here we have Michael Cantor. Cantor? Like Gerd Cantor, maybe? No. Um, throwing the weight. Two turns. Otterbein University. Division three. OAC represent. Always glad to help out somebody coming from the same humble roots as myself. Um, just get right into it. Sling start is good. Not bad. One more time. Okay. So to begin, I like the sling start. Like I said, I think that's the, the best way to start the weight. Most people aren't strong enough or don't have the coordination to wind the weight effectively um, and still use that force that is created efficiently. Uh, so that the sling start like I went over in my How to Throw Weight Like a Boss video series, uh, is the way to go. Um, that being said, though, I don't know if doing a sling start on two turns is ideal. Um, I think three turns is a sweet spot because, realistically, that first turn, you don't really gain much momentum. It's just about setting up the radius and, and setting up, uh, you know, some feeling. And, uh, and yeah, it's hard to, hard to get... When, when, you, when you do two turn, two turn the weight... Um, I think uh, it's just hard to get it going with just two turns and a sling start. So maybe consider going to three, Michael. Just food for thought. You don't have to. I definitely wouldn't say start winding the weight. I feel like that's the opposite. But hopefully after this analysis, you'll have a better idea of how to use the sling start to your advantage in a two turn. Uh, so breaking it down for my frame. So like I said, sling start, connect nice and early. Eyes turn to the right, shoulders turn back. Uh, you can see yourself getting pulled to your right side right here. So you see that weight shift as the weight comes back. You shift from your left side to your right side. Um, that's going to predispose you to automatically having too much weight on the right side. So when you set up sling start, always load your left side. Um, uh, left shoulder over left hip, over left knee, over left foot. More weight on the left side in that sling start. Um, and then also, don't let your hands come up and down so much. Um, you see this big upswing and then this big downswing is going to happen after that. And then, once again, that's just going to make things harder to get the ball going. Because you go from up to down and then you're trying to push around. There's a whole bunch of different momentum going in different ways that you don't want. Um, so, during this start, try to bring the ball a little lower and a little flatter and a little bit more around. Um, not to say that I have the best weight throw technique, but I think for what I'm trying to achieve in my sling start weight throw, I think I do a good job. And uh, so, so refer to a video of myself, um, shameless plug, um, to see how to do a sling start just a little better. Um, but yeah, like I said, so, a little, so besides those things, flatter entry is good. Uh, you can see your left shoulder is a little high. So you're automatically going to hold tension up there, and this left side is going to take over the throw. Um, try to use, once again, a flatter sling start. That, that flatter preliminary swing, I guess, uh, will help set up uh, your, your right side, so your right hand and right arm and right hip and right oblique to uh, push the ball around better. So after this sling, think about using entirely your right arm, right pec, right oblique, right hip, right leg to propel the ball around. Whereas right now you have this massive stretch on this left side, so you're going to use that stretch and use that left side, which is not really any good. But what you do 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 better is that shift back to that left side. So that weight shifted initially to the right, now shifts back to the left. That's good. Um, but better to just stay there so you can use your right side better. And then you can see, so like up until this point, things are good, relatively speaking. Ball's a little low right there, I think. Um, and then you'll start to see this left side shift back and your hips shift down. That's a huge inefficient movement right there. Um, ideally, you don't want your hips to drop at all while you're in double support, and you don't want this left side to shift back at all while you're in double support. It's hard to do with the weight because it is so short and so heavy, so it takes a lot of strength to do it effectively. But like I said, if you just keep grinding out that, that right side and using that right side and strengthening that right side in the preliminary swing and the entry, it'll make things that much more efficient. You'll go from throwing 12, 13, 14 meters to 16, 17, 18 in a matter of no time once you learn that feeling and can do it every throw. So 
left side, left shoulder, left hip, left knee. Needs to stay right here. The hips can go back just a slight tad, but uh, not that much. And once again, starting off the heel, I've gone over this in some other technical analysis videos. Starting off the heel is hard because um, most people do have the tendency to, in an effort to put the heel, left heel down, they straighten out this left leg. And the only way to straighten out the left leg is to push the hips back unless you're going to stand straight up. Um, which is going to put you in an even worse position. Um, so really, once again, you just got to use this right leg to pressure and wait for the ball to come around, 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 around. Your connection in terms of waiting for the ball is not bad. With the ball rising here in this left shoulder high, get that left shoulder down, flatter. Once again, I'm going to say that a lot because it's the weight throw and flatter is better because that way it doesn't pull on you as much. Um, so left shoulder down, little flatter ball. Keep this left hip where it is. Drive this right leg, this right hip around that left side. Let the ball come around. Long arms, long arms, long arms. Good. But this position, like I said, is not ideal. That left side's leading. You can see that left foot ahead of the ball. That left knee and left hip is so far back. You have all this weight on that right side. So like I said, in that entry where you um, have that weight shift left and right and left and right, uh, if you set it up more on the left and use more of that right, it'll be more stable and there'll be less shifting back. Like I said, this is just efficient, inefficient, inefficient, sorry. Um, and since, once again, up and down motion in the swings, ball's down here, ball's up on the left, and then ball comes down and crashes here, and that makes things super hard. Once again, the ball drops, you drop. Um, and just just overall inefficiency. Not to say that, you know, it's the worst throw in the world. No, by no means. Um, it's just uh, there's there's a lot more you can do to uh, use the strength you have uh, to throw the weight farther. Uh, you don't look like a very big, you know, you're not like some hulking six 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 seven guy who's 300 pounds who can just grip and rip the weight. Um, if anything, you look a little bit more similar to my size, maybe 6'1", 6'2", 230, 240 pounds. Um, you got to use your positions to your advantage. Um, so then as the ball comes left, ball drops, that's going to pull you down and have too much weight on the right side. Uh, I like the effort to drop that left knee and come down, but it is mistimed. Uh, as the ball, same thing that you don't want your hips to drop in double support or rise in single support. While the ball is coming down, you don't want your hips to come down, and as the ball rises, you don't want your hips to go up. It's kind of the same thing, but with your this this orbit that you have, your low point being over here and your high point being just about there at 90 degrees, um, your hips come down with the ball. And once again, inefficiency. That's losing tension, losing connection. So I imagine that when you come down in this second turn and that catch, you feel the ball really jerk down on you, and that's why you kind of tighten up a little bit and then just because your ball drops and it lifts even more. Like I said, flatter is better. Um, look at Lance Steele. His ball is more or less flat until his third or fourth turn. Um, and, you know, that's not to say we all need to throw like Lance Steele, but he is a good model to use, especially in the weight throw. Flatter, simple, uh, very efficient. Um, but posture is bad here. Posture breaks, once again, because posture was not very good from the start. Um, I think uh, you do a good job of trying to get that right hip underneath you, but you just start in such a rough position in that first turn, coming back to here, <clears throat> that it's hard to really get that right hip underneath you, but you do a decent job of sneaking that right leg underneath you. Um, and then uh, as you come through, left heel gets down early, left shoulder is still tight, left arm is still tight, but your better connection left hip goes back and you rise up now so once again same thing like I said before if you rise when the ball rises that's inefficient um, when you come up you don't come off that left foot at all which is good and you catch a little late funky position here I don't even I don't even know um, but then you come through on the finish and yeah there's just a lot of shifting um, I think, uh, yeah, a lot of, lot of stuff to improve in there. So that means a lot more distance to be gained. Um, so, yeah, once again, one more, one more time just run through to give you a little breakdown. More weight on the left side, flatter, sling start, 
more right side, way more right side. Solidify that left side in there in the entry. Hold that left side and really work that right side around. Flatter. Don't let the ball rise at 90. If anything, you want the high point to be closer to 180. And then sneak that right hip under. Keep those shoulders back over the hips on this catch, just like you would in the entry. That'll help with efficiency and stability. You work the ball longer through double support. Left side's more loaded. Keep that left leg bent. Don't spike that left leg to get the heel down. And then as you come around, try to stay one level in the throw, too. Don't try to drop and don't try to rise. Just try to stay one level. And if you do everything right, you will react to the ball naturally. Whereas now, here, it looks a little artificial up and down through the legs. Just try to relax and stay one level throughout the throw. Imagine like a quarter squat. You want to keep that quarter squat, bent knees, throughout the whole throw, centered, not shifting back away from the left. Um, and then that will, uh, yeah, the finish isn't bad. You just get pulled forward because, like I said, there's a lot of shifting left and right in the throw and up and down. Um, just not a very stable throw, probably hard to repeat. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down. And, uh... Yeah. Overall rhythm, though, is decent, especially for a two-turn. Um, so, yeah, like I said, maybe consider three turns. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, especially if you improve all the stuff that I just said. Stability. If you improve the stability of the throw and the efficiency of the throw, three turns should be no problem. Um, so, yeah. All right. Uh, that's the end of this technical analysis. If you guys want one of your own, go to my website, seandonley.biz, $15 for an in-depth technical analysis, or $5 for a Instagram technical analysis. Sit me up, and let's get to work, and help you set those PRs. It's the off-season, pre-season, weight throws coming up. Get those knowledge bombs dropped on you so you can set PRs this season. All right, thanks for watching, Sean Don. Peace and out. Once again, SeanDonnelly.biz.